I get it. Being cold when you're sleeping in the middle of nowhere in the backcountry is like a nightmare. I should know. I'm a cold sleeper. It's something I'm always thinking about. But it hasn't stopped me from getting out into the backcountry, even in the middle of winter. Now, if you follow what I'm going to tell you in this video and try some of the tricks I'm going to suggest along the way, you too can sleep warm and comfortably in the backcountry, even if you are a freezing cold sleeper like myself. So, let's get to it. One of the reasons I wanted to make this video is because I hear about it all the time. People saying, I'd like to go backpacking, but don't you get cold when you're out there in the middle of the night? Or you go out in winter, how do you stay warm at night? There's so many people who think that being cold when you sleep is going to hold them back or hold you back from having a good backpacking trip. And it doesn't have to. In fact, with a few lessons that I'm gonna tell you in this video, as well as a few of the tricks I've learned along the way, you can stay warm while you sleep in the backcountry. I totally get that people have all these different reasons and excuses that hold them back from going backpacking. And that's why here at Backcountry Forward, because we believe the backcountry is for everyone, I do my best to offer the tips and tools to get backpackers backpacking. And being warm at night is an important part of going backpacking. So in this video, I'm going to cover the three basics as well as go through some of the little tricks that I've learned to stay warm at night, even in the middle of winter. But these tricks work year round, but it starts with the three basic things that you need to stay warm at night. The first one is simple and it starts with your sleep system, but it doesn't start with your sleeping bag. It starts with your sleeping pad. I recently was having a conversation on Instagram with somebody who thought that they could go to Iceland in the middle of winter with a non-insulated sleeping pad. And I tried to explain that that is the most important part of staying warm at night in the backcountry. And this isn't just backpacking, this is a survival tip. You need to get your body up off the ground. And so an insulated sleeping pad will do that for you. Now, if you're a cold sleeper like me, you're not gonna wanna go with anything that's lower than like 2.5 R value in the summertime, especially if you know it's gonna be getting cold. Don't go to one of those like 1.2 sleeping bags. You can, but you'll probably get a little chilly. Now, when it comes to those shoulder seasons or even winter, I use the Climate Static V insulated sleeping pad. I'm testing out a new sleeping pad, but we'll get to that in a different video. I trust a sleeping pad that stays at about our value of four or higher in the winter months or the shoulder season. To be honest, I'll even take that out in the summer if I know it's gonna get a little chilly or I'm going into high altitudes because I want to be warm. I remember my first backpacking trip. I had no idea. I thought, well, I got a good sleeping bag. I have a comfortable sleeping pad. I'll be fine. First of all, boy, was I wrong about all of that. My sleeping bag was not warm enough. It was rated to a survival rating versus a comfort rating. My sleeping pad had no R value, so I was just freezing all night long. Now, fortunately, I quickly learned that I'm just a cold sleeper in general, so I had to learn some things, but it starts with the right sleeping system. You need an insulated sleeping pad, and then you need a good sleeping bag. Make sure that it's warm enough. You're gonna want a sleeping bag that's rated to about five to 10 degrees colder than what you expect to experience, especially if you're a cold sleeper like myself. One year, I even went out with a zero degree sleeping bag all summer long. Now, that was a little excessive, but boy, was I toasty. You want a warm sleeping bag. That is crucial to your sleeping system, but not as important as a warm sleeping pad. Now, the other thing you can do, which I often do, is bring a sleeping bag liner. This will add some extra warmth. You can get the Sea to Summit Reactor Extreme Liner, which will keep you just a little warmer at night as you go to bed. So that's the basics. Rule number one, you need the right sleep system. Ask questions. Feel free to ask me questions. Go on to Instagram, Backcountry Forward, and I will be happy to answer any of the questions. Leave them in the comments below, and the community around can answer your questions. Make sure you have the right sleep system. Okay, basic rule number two to having a good night's sleep in, in the backcountry is staying dry. I can't emphasize this enough. And I don't just mean staying dry during the day. I mean also staying dry at night. In fact, one night I woke up sopping wet because I had made one 
fatal decision and I was freezing. Fortunately, it was just a test night. I had to bail on the trip, hike out to my parents' house where I spent the rest of the night. That was actually two years ago to the day of this trip. That's kind of crazy to think. And my mistake was that I had brought a Mylar blanket into my sleeping bag. I had no idea that it was gonna trap all the moisture of my body and radiate it back to me, making me even colder. And that's when I learned the crucial lesson, stay dry. Now you also wanna stay dry throughout the entire day. So without a shadow of a doubt, especially if you're a cold sleeper, have a separate sleep system outfit that you put on that stays dry that you never wear at any other point during the day. It should be in a dry bag, in your backpack, so at night in your tent you get into that, you get into your sleeping bag and you're warm and dry. The second thing is you want to make sure that sleeping bag of yours stays dry. Yes, it might be some extra weight, but maybe consider putting it in a dry bag, making sure that your backpack is as watertight as possible because a wet sleeping bag will make you colder at night and if you're already prone to being cold at night it's just gonna make you miserable staying dry also means that you don't have too many layers on as you're going to sleep that you're sweating that being said you can put on layers so that you stay warm in your sleeping bag but you just don't want to overdo it Staying dry is really important. Basic thing number three, and this one everyone misses, no one thinks about, and it's so important. Fuel. No, I'm not talking about your canister fuel. I'm talking about your fuel, your body's fuel. You need fuel to stay warm. You need to eat and stay hydrated. Too often, people neglect drinking, and that actually is such an important part of your body's temperature regulation system that if you're dehydrated, you can get cold that much easier. And if you haven't eaten recently, you're just going to get colder. I recommend having a high fat, high calorie meal 15 to 20 minutes before you get into your sleeping bag. It should be the last thing you do before you go in for the night. And if you know that this is safe where you're going, and it's not safe in a lot of places, but sometimes I do it, is bring a snack into your sleeping bag. Something that you can munch on as you wake up in the middle of the night, it will help keep your system warm. Now, if you're not able to do that, you could also put that snack somewhere close by where you know in the middle of the night when you have to go to relieve yourself, go walk to that area where your little snack bag is hanging in the tree, grab your, your granola bar, chow down, relieve yourself, and get back into your tent. It might take a little extra time, and I know in the middle of the night you're like, thinking that's the last thing you want to do, but that extra fuel will keep you warmer. So those are the three basic things you need to stay warm if you're a cold sleeper. The right sleep system, insulated sleeping pad, a warm enough sleeping bag, and maybe even a sleeping liner. Staying dry, bring that extra pair of clothing. Yes, it's extra weight, but you'll be thankful because you won't be wet. And keep that bedding dry. Rule number three, stay fueled up. Hydrate yourself and eat a hearty meal right before you go to bed. Now, those are the basics. Maybe you're already doing those things or you think, yeah, yeah, I know. What are some tricks? Well, let me tell you, I got some. I can tell you a few things that I do. If you look into my tent right now, I'll show you the first one. It's this. If you can't see it, you should be able to hear it. It's a Mylar sheet that I use as my ground sheet. Summer or winter, it doesn't matter. It goes underneath me. And that just serves to radiate some of my body heat back up into the tent rather than letting it go straight down to the ground. It's a small thing, but I find it really helps. Another kind of two-in-one tips is keep your feet and your head warm. Wear a beanie or a toque if you're in Canada. Wear socks. Remember how I said you're gonna have that separate dry sleeping outfit? Make sure you have a warm pair of socks to put in there. If you're going winter camping and you have a pair of winter boots that have internal liners, I take the liners out and I keep my feet inside and I put them in my, my sleeping bag so that those liners keep my feet warm warm and let me tell you it makes getting up in the morning or the middle of the night and putting on your shoes that much easier so it helps not only while you're sleeping and also when you're waking up head and feet covered you need that trick number three and this is a lifesaver Nalgene bottles whether you love them or you're like Carl Mandrioli and you hate them PS backpacking and blisters 
Prime podcast. Check it out. The only reason I bought one was for winter camping, and now I'm glad that I have it for shoulder season and any time where I think it's going to get a little colder. Basically, you take one of these, you boil the water, you put the water in this, you put it in your sleeping bag like 15, 20 minutes before you get in, and then you have a nice warm water bottle to cuddle with all night long. On winter camping trips, I bring two, no joke. One for me to cuddle with and one at my feet to keep my feet warm throughout the entire night. Life changing, seriously, try it. Now you wanna make sure you screw on the lid extra tight, stay dry. Speaking of that, I gotta stay hydrated. Okay, two last little tricks before I let you go. Wear some clothing. I know I mentioned this earlier, but bring your clothing into your sleeping bag with you, either by wearing it or just kind of around you or at the foot box of your sleeping bag, however you want to do it, because this does two things. First of all, it makes less space, air space, that your body has to heat, heat up. More added insulation inside around you. Secondly, getting up in the morning and putting that clothes, those clothes on is way warmer because they've been warming with you all night. The last trick, and this is the key how I, as a really, really cold sleeper, genuinely, I get cold so easily, stay warm while I'm in the backcountry, even down to extremely frigid temperatures in the middle of winter, like minus 25 degrees Fahrenheit. I made an entire video about it right here. It's layering your sleep system. If you wanna learn more about that, you can click that video. It will be super helpful and it's a budget option for how you can extend your backpacking experience. I hope you guys found this video helpful and remember, keep moving forward. I'll see you over in the next one.